There's a lot of reasons I love fly fishing. It gets you outside. That's the easiest answer. Is it's a great way to kind of get out and connect with nature. And at the end of the day, fly fishing takes you to beautiful places. This is what you do if you're all by yourself. It's a, it's a great way to, to see the world. That's Brian Tro, co-owner of Mossy Creek Fly Fishing in Harrisonburg. For an afternoon last week, Brian was my teacher as I took the store's beginner class in fly fishing. There's no end to the variety. You can't perfect fly fishing. I mean, some of the best fly fishermen in the world are in their 70s and 80s, and it's because it takes a lifetime to kind of like uh, accumulate all the knowledge about bugs and stream conditions. But I only had an afternoon, which for Brian and the rest of the instructors at Mossy Creek was more than enough time to take me from newbie to casting a hook in the water. Oh, this is so frustrating. You almost got it. Take your time. The fish aren't going anywhere, right? A half-day class lasts for about four and a half hours. Step one, a classroom session at the store in Harrisonburg. This knot is called the improved clinch knot. Okay. Okay. And you're going to kind of hold the tag into the line, and you're going to turn the fly seven times. The first part of the curriculum, learning about the equipment, rods, reels, all the different kinds of lines. The first hands-on task is tying the three most essential knots in fly fishing. Pull on the other pieces of string, slowly, boom, you got it, man. Beautiful blood knot. Check it out, look at it. You can let go. Perfect blood knot. Success. For Brian, who's been fly fishing his whole life, the knots were a snap. For me, who wore Velcro shoes until I was 12, it was a bit tougher. I eventually got the hang of all three, and besides, in fly fishing, knowing how to tie a knot is crucial. You hook into something that you've really been working towards, the biggest trout of your life, and it fails because you didn't take one extra second to tighten your knot, sure. and you're going to be, I see it, it's like heartbreak. It's like you lost your puppy dog, you know? After the knots, we moved on to the flies. In fly fishing, they're the bait. There are literally thousands to choose from, and it turns out fish can be pretty picky. If you lived in a 8x8 eight eight cabin for five years, you would be very aware of every little thing that goes on in it, okay? Right. That's their little world. It's everything that floats through. So as the bugs come and go, they can get very tuned into that. They can be opportunistic and they can eat anything that you put on some days. Right. Other days it's like they're eating one size, one shade, mm. one shape, one shade of color of one fly. And it's your job as the angler to figure that out. Depending on water conditions, fish eat flies both on top of and below the surface. In order to learn how to fish both techniques, we brought a few of each to the stream. Which brings us to part two of Brian's beginner class, a short drive to a private stream 15 minutes north of Harrisonburg to learn the art of fly casting. So that's where we're going to start. The cast, like most things in fly fishing, can take a lifetime to perfect, but a basic understanding can also be taught in around an hour. Yeah. I got my first lesson in an open field without a hook on the line. One of the hardest things about fly casting is everything that you've learned to do from throwing a football to throwing a spinning rod to throwing anything or swinging a club. Everything's done in like the forward motion. With a fly cast, if you want it 30 feet out there on the water, you have to throw it 30 feet back there behind you, which means your back cast, what happens behind you, has to be equal and even to what happens in front of you. That's where the back and forth motion comes in. Keeping the line in the air, momentum is generated, providing the speed to eventually send the fly forward into the water. Good. Gradually, more techniques are introduced. Pick your spot and stop and drop. Beautiful. Can you stop? Mm -hmm. Let it fall. Got you it. got a good cast, man. Cool, I'm man. I'm serious. Like, All right, I like A really good cast. And with that vote of confidence and about an hour of casting practice, I was ready to hit the water. In part one of Gone Fishing, I took the beginner class at Mossy Creek Fly Fishing in Harrisonburg. Store owner Brian Tro's lesson started in the classroom where the basics of the sport were taught. Equipment, knot tying, and learning about the different types of flies. And you will find a woolly bugger. From there, we moved outside to learn how to cast. After about an hour or so, I had a pretty good understanding of the technique and what Brian assured me was enough skill to hit the water. If you're looking for a reason to get outdoors and you know just hiking doesn't appeal to you or just canoeing, um, fly fishing is a great angle and a great way to go about it. Uh, you get to interact with nature. It takes you to beautiful places. Beautiful places like Smith Creek on Susie Q Farm, about five minutes south of Newmarket. It's a fly fishing only, catch and release only creek. It didn't take us long to find what we came for. We've already seen a couple of huge fish, yeah. just so you know. Brian took the rod first. He wanted to take a few casts to show me how to put it all together on the stream. On just his second cast, we got a sign that we were in for a good day. Here comes the trout. Here comes the trout. Ready? Rod tip up. See? Watch closely what I'm doing. See, I keep my rod as high as I can. Uh huh. When he fights hard, I let some line go. When he slows down, I'm going to gain. 
it's a tug of war, right? Mm -hmm. Let him let him run, and then gain. Let him run, and then gain. You can see his body language. You're, she, you're trying to tire him out, right? Yeah. She's slowing down some, right? Mm -hmm. This is what you do if you're all by yourself. Oh, <laughs> so this is just that easy, right? See how easy it is? Brian getting one that easily was a huge confidence booster. Now it was my turn. We started with the drive fly. That's a fly that sits on top of the water. Nice cast, man. That's, that's where you call yours. Man. This is the money spot right here. It didn't take long for me to get some nibbles, or as they say in fly fishing, get eaten. Good. Oh, he went over it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, throw it back out to him. Strip, strip, set, set, right to pump. Ooh, fish. I had him, I had him, I had him. The key to landing a fish is once you get eaten, to pull on the rod to set the hook. Set, 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 set. He ate you twice. Oh. Lay it back down. Otherwise, the fish will realize the fly is phony and just spit it out. Another consideration is knowing when to move from one spot to the other. Fish can get spooked from all the commotion in the stream, especially when a clumsy beginner is fishing. We switched up our spot about every 10 to 15 minutes. After about an hour or so, with so many close calls, we tried one last spot, a shady bend in the stream underneath trees that required a sidearm cast from our knees. You're going to creep up here with me. Get low. And come right over here on my right side. We're actually going to stay down. Ooh. Big fish. Good. This spot was promising, but the close calls kept coming. Set, 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 set. Not tip up. Oh, Adam, Adam. Adam. <laughs> so what you're, what's happening here is this. They're a little bit spooky, but they're getting each other excited. Then with our day coming to a close. Set, 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 set. Not tip up. He's a big fish. Keep your rod high. Keep your rod high. Okay. Rod's high. Okay. Let him run. Let him run. Okay. Let him run. Let him run. Let him run. Let I finally got my fish. Real. Real, real, real. My real. rainbow trout put up quite a fight. This fish is not even close to being ready. It's okay. a nice trout. It took about two He's minutes to finally reel her into shore. Boom. Success. But once we got her on the bank, I knew that fly fishing had me hooked. <laughs> All right, man. Nice. That's what I'm talking about. This fish is huge. Brian measured my trout at 19 inches and a little over three pounds. After the picture, we got her back into the water as soon as possible. Not bad for a single day's lesson. From novice to fish in right around five hours. Plus, no need to tell a fisherman's tale for my friends back home. It's not lying when it's fishing. It's embellishing, you know. So, um, I, but I'll be honest with you, to, to catch that uh, on your first day, uh, you're, you might as well just not even go ever again. You're, you're done. You're done. <laughs> that was awesome.